OMG, like seriously? Hi, it's Fifi, and you are like totally tuning in to the Vintage View podcast. And now brace yourselves for the ultimate hosts of awesomeness, Scott and Sam. Like, take it away, guys. Me, yow. Hello again, retro gaming fans, and welcome back to the Vintage View podcast. Ah, can you smell that, Scott? I don't smell anything. Ah, it smells like a good old-fashioned Saturday morning. Um, Saturday morning? It's Wednesday evening. Well, you just let all the magic out of the bag, didn't you? Yeah, well, of course we record these well before. Anyway, so we're talking about Saturday morning. Obviously. One of the greatest things to our generation and possibly the generation before us and possibly one after us. And you know what? Let's uh, just a uh, Saturday morning should be great to everybody. Just have a good old Saturday morning. That's all I'm saying. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, I was going to start singing that song, but I probably shouldn't because, you know, copyright, copyright. issues and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so what do we want to talk about with Saturday morning? We're going to talk about cartoons. We're going to talk about, you know, what we did on Saturdays. What's what's the deal here? Everything about Saturday morning. That's what we're going to talk about, everything. Okay. Well, um, what are we going to do? Start talking about what we, you know, our, our typical Saturday morning, or do you just want to wing it? I don't know what you, what you want to do here. So you're talking. You, talk about, you talk about yours because, oddly enough, I had – a unique situation where sometimes I had two different Saturday mornings, obviously not on the same day, but I had one at home and then when I would spend the, the night at friends' homes. Okay. Well, I'll, get, I'll do mine then. So as long as I can remember, I would actually get up at 6 a.m. on Saturday, even as a snot-nosed little kid, and go and watch TV – until 11 o'clock and the way that it used to work was uh, uh, at 6 to 7 a.m. they would always play on basically all the local channels they would always go ahead and play all of the you know older cartoons that were in syndication and everything and then from uh, I think it was 8 o'clock till 11 10 o'clock on some of the channels but anyway um, that's where they would have the the newer cartoons that they would do every week and that was kind of my my Sunday morning and then eventually um, you know once I once I uh, got some video games then uh, as soon as soon as 11 o'clock rolled around there's no more cartoons at least until my parents kicked me off the TV I would be playing video games Sometimes they would kick me off the TV to play video games themselves. But anyway, that's a <laughs> totally different story. But, I mean, that's that's kind of all it was. And I would just basically raid the refrigerator and just grab cereal or leftovers or whatever and just sit there and eat that while I'm watching cartoons. Yeah, my Saturday mornings uh, at home, we never had cable. So I was stuck with the basic... You know, ABC, CBS, NBC, and sometimes Fox. That's mostly I think what I watched Fox, on Saturday, though. Okay. Um, I think Fox got into the game a little bit late compared to the other channels. Yeah. But, yeah, I think ours started probably around like 7-ish, 8-ish in the morning, something like that. And I want to say it went until noon, 1 o'clock. Eh, that's my faulty memory coming into play again. Yeah, because you you know, yep. So back in my day, uh, I would Funny wake I'm up. You old, but I'm older than you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I would wake up, uh, walk out into the living room, and I was the only one awake. So I would turn on the TV, just kind of you know cruise between channels, see what was on, and then you know obviously it was uh, cereal or pop tarts or like you said, you know sometimes leftovers or whatever was in there. And I think cereal was definitely my favorite because what I would do is I would pour one bowl of cereal and then I would use a fork. So that way I'm getting all the cereal out of it and I'm flavoring the milk. 
And then I would take that bowl right back to the kitchen and add more cereal on top of it. And I think, I think that probably says a lot of what's wrong with me now. Probably quite a bit. No, um, yeah. I later in life I stopped eating cereal because I had a tendency to uh, consume half a gallon of milk and a whole box of cereal in one sitting. Yeah. I, I think I like cereal a little too much. So I I don't eat it because, well, most cereal is trash and it's not good for you at all. I don't think most cereal even back then was good for anybody. Oh, no, no, That's not one bit. All um, the Saturday I mean, there were morning some, cereals. There were some like the um, Honey Bunches of Oats, which I actually really like. Um, there shredded was wheat. Shredded wheat. There was... Um, uh, grape nuts, which were weird because you could leave them in the water for like two days and they'd still stay crunchy. I don't think I ever tried those. Those are probably, it's probably a, an exaggeration, but you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I'm squirming around because about two months ago I had an injury. I broke my ankle and, and uh, I'm wearing a boot right now and that's not the most comfortable thing to sit here and, uh, do the podcast with. So if I'm moving around squirming, that's what's going on. People just figured. All right. Felt the need to my say that. Second, let's talk about my second Saturday morning friend's was house. yes. When I would spend the night at a friend's house, uh, I think we, we covered this on Friday nights. We would go and rent a video game mm-hmm. and then Saturday morning, like obviously is they had cable. So there was Cartoon Network, there was Nickelodeon, and I don't think we ever watched the the basic, you know, network TV uh, channels. So it was always, you know, Cartoon Network or or Nickelodeon, but that didn't last long because video games. So at a friend's house, you know, um, we would eat just, you know, whatever they had, and almost immediately, if any cartoons were on, they would be shut off in favor of video games. I could see that. I could definitely see that. It's funny you you mentioned uh, having cable. I did have cable growing up, but I didn't care for um, Cartoon Network and all that when it came out because it was all like old cartoons, which I didn't care too much for. Um, I liked the newer ones that were on Saturday morning and you know, weekday afternoons on the local channels. I like those a lot more than, well, yeah. <laughs> I like those All a right. lot more than the older ones. And that brings us into what kind of cartoons did we watch? I watched anything. No, um, actually, I did come up with a list of cartoons that I liked watching as a kid, but I found out that a good half of them either... They weren't on on Saturday, or they were in that one-hour block in the morning where it had the older cartoons, because that was things like you know Ducktales and Ninja Turtles and Animaniacs and Gargoyles and all those. Those were actually weekday cartoons, but I think I was watching them mostly in on Saturdays. But the ones that I I really enjoyed on Saturdays, I mean, there's like the uh, uh, your Spider Man's Captain N and the Game Master, which was probably one of the reasons why I wanted to get a Nintendo and I ended up getting it way later in life. And then there's one cartoon that I remember, but most people don't. And that was Snorks. It was like the underwater Smurfs. It was kind of weird. I, I retroactively remember Snorks because, (laughs) uh, when I moved out of the, the old folks home, that you know my parents home um and moved into a place that had cable they started showing that um i can't remember what channel it was but they started showing that at like five or six o'clock in the morning Ooh. so yeah, yeah. that's early but yeah it, it it's funny though as a kid i would i would literally get up at six o'clock in the morning now i'm not a morning person whatsoever no but yeah I, but I would watch all those shows because there was there was even another show that I mentioned now and people are like, what? And that was a TV show called The Littles. It 
it was on TV with new episodes well before I was old enough to remember them and watching them. But apparently they were on, and I remember watching them on TV, and that was The Littles. Now, was that the cartoon of, like, little people that would run around and borrow stuff and, like, buttons and whatnot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here, let me let me pull up an image real quick here if Google wants to cooperate with me. See, now you're talking about things like um, DuckTales and, and whatnot. Woo. Yeah, I... I never remember those being on set. Kind of like you said, I never remember those being on Saturday. Although I'm quite sure some places probably did market those. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. I don't remember. Again, I don't remember watching it, but I remember retroactively seeing episodes of it. Yeah, I remember watching it, but it was. Uh, I don't remember much about it, but I remember watching it on TV. Yeah. And I, so I'm assuming that it was since it was on on the air for like three years. So I was like four years old when it stopped. Um, I didn't watch it when it was brand new. I think I watched it uh, probably when I was like f- mid '80s, after it had come off of of regular play. But then there's another cartoon that I remember watching, but I don't remember much about it, and that was Dungeons and Dragons. As we talked on a previous episode about role playing games, I've always I always wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons, and I think the cartoon was probably one of the things that got me interested in it. And again, that was another cartoon that had its run before I was old enough to probably remember because it was on in the early eighties. Yeah, I don't remember that one at all. But uh, to finish my thought was, you know, a lot of Sorry. those cartoons. Um, I imagine they probably did use them on Saturdays in some markets, but mm-hmm. uh, it, where I grew up, they did the afternoon stuff. Um, the, uh, for whatever reason, I remember Gargoyles being on a completely different channel from DuckTales and like Tailspin and stuff. And I, probably wrong. It should have all been on ABC. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking they should be still on the same channel because it's all Disney. Um, I love Gargoyles, but, man. I do remember Animaniacs being on weekdays. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God, there was Thundercats. Well, you speaking about cats? Uh, the one I was thinking of was Bonkers the Cat. I don't remember that cartoon one bit. Really? No, not not at all. I Hold think, on, let me. I think it was uh, a cat who was a police officer. Bonkers the animated series. If I'm thinking correctly, and as we know, I'm probably not. All right, I'm pulling up the image right now. But got, uh, on, on Saturdays, definitely, yeah. There we go. See, I don't that was another that at all. one. Really? No, not one bit. But as far as like Saturday morning cartoons, I, I think there was definitely you know GI Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was uh, a weekly thing So you might have been watching it on syndication Probably um, There was Muppet Babies Which I absolutely Loved as a kid I barely remember that one But one I did like as, as kids was uh, Tiny Toons Oh yeah but yeah. I think that was also um, a weekday thing But I do remember seeing me, it on a Saturday yeah. So I think it was uh, In the 90s at least When cartoons started kind of waning yeah um they did Um, it on saturdays i think too to kind of fill some blocks we had obviously you know teenage mutant ninja turtles was definitely a saturday for me oh it was a weekday we had uh we had something called uh silver hawks which was but i'm not sure hold on let me me yeah it was the thing about silver hawks was it was weird because they were all wearing this very tight metallic body spandex or something. Oh, you know what? I I kind of vaguely remember that. I don't I don't think I've ever seen it, but I remember seeing stuff about it. Yeah. The only reason I remember that is because while I was putting this all together, I was going to talk about the the toys that they pushed relentlessly during Saturday morning cartoon commercials. Huh. And I remember Joe, I, My Little Pony. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Barbie, 
He-Man stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Obviously, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys were all over the place. But the Silverhawks, um, I remember getting one of those. And I, I can't remember whether it was that one or another toy. And again, here we are in my faulty memory. Woo! Um, but it came with a strip of those caps that go into a cap gun. And it, it may not have been a Silverhawks figure now that I I'm thinking I remember about that, it. too. I don't remember a lot of details. But I remember, like, my mom freaked the heck out. She's like, oh, no, you can't have that. Although I could have a cap gun. So, uh, but then there was, like, Recess was really good. Um, did you ever watch Recess? I, I know of it. I've never watched. Okay. Uh, Captain Planet? I wasn't a fan. I mean, I, I used to watch it as actually as an adult when there was nothing else on TV. Not a fan. Little Scott hated the environment. Listen to that. I still do. <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, people. Don't cancel I throw us. Throw my rubbish wherever it lands. I was but, joking. Um, do not cancel us. But you, one that really got to me was Reboot. Oh, I love that. That was because that brought that was a Saturday 3D. morning one. I forgot about it completely. Yes, yeah, that brought 3D animation and video games together because there was that voice that kept telling you game incoming. I think it was, wasn't it? Something mm -hmm. to that effect. And like you know, they had to get rid. That was a good one, although a bit dated if you watch it now. Oh it's yeah, still, the anim it's, it's, it's all still, CG and it was just it's sad. Yeah. But. Early I remember day. something about a reboot that they were thinking. <laughs> a reboot uh, of reboot. Yeah, I, as I said it, I realized, wait a minute. Um, but I remember something about a reboot. And you were talking about those those toys that had the caps and everything. Do you remember these toys? I do not. Those, those stud things, right? Like, on their chest and on their shoulders, you would attach things to those. Well, I, I can imagine. Yeah. And uh, I remember having a bunch of those toys. There was a cartoon that I didn't watch, but they say it was on Saturday mornings called Karate Commandos. Spelled with a K because it was Chuck Norris. And I remember going to a big lot's and they had like a whole bunch of the the karate commandos chuck norris and i sat there and begged my parents can i get this can i i didn't know who chuck norris was i had never seen the cartoon all i knew was it was a kung fu action figure that within my childhood mind was cheap and bright and i wanted it and i begged my parents to get it for me and i ended up walking out of the store with one you know what uh I don't know if it was the same one, but there was a Chuck Norris uh, cartoon that had action figures. Well, naturally. I mean, let me, let me you know. It. Yeah, it was Karate Commando. So I actually had a bunch of those action figures myself. And I remember playing with them in the empty lot across the street from my house after we had a bunch of rain. And I think I lost two of them. And they were my two favorite ones. And uh, I never thought to go back to where I was playing with them and with a shovel after everything solidified again to find them. Oh, that's kind of, you just kind of sparked a memory in my mind was the fact that on Saturday mornings, once, uh, partially, not all the time, but once the cartoons were over, we had this little mud spot right off of the porch of the, uh, the trailer as you know, and I had my Tonka toys, which back then were metal. Like, Oh, Little yeah, men die ones. of infection, you know. You're playing with it. You you get hit with it. You're you're getting cut, and that dirt's going right in there. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I would sit there and I would play in that little mud area, and, and action figures and Tonka toys and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we used to, across the street from my house. Going on a tangent, not talking about Saturdays. Although I probably did some on Saturday. Yeah. Um, th that same empty lot. There was a bunch of of space where my friends and i would would build like a whole city with uh like t 
tunnels and everything else for our, our toy cars, like our Matchbox or, or Hot Wheels cars. And we had that whole city. It looked beautiful. We would, like, use sticks and stuff and build things with it and everything. And then one day the, the big kids came through and destroyed everything. Well. As, as they do, unfortunately. As they do. As they do. While hey, do researching remember, the... Do you remember this cartoon? Was... Yes. I do. <laughs> I didn't have many of the toys, though. I never. But had I do remember that cartoon. Um, while researching for this, I found a, a cartoon called Potato Head Kids what? that sounds familiar, but I so can't weird. place any of the episodes. And I think it's like Mr. Potato Head had kids, and and they're you know doing the mischief, kind of riding the coattails of Muppet Babies. I'm uh, assuming. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. But here's another thing. What about movies that got turned into cartoons for Saturday morning? Um, you had Police Academy and Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I forgot about Police Academy. I've never seen it. Though. Yeah. I should look it up. But one one that I've wanted to see, and I because it's I, I watched a few episodes when I was younger, never could catch the, all the other episodes on a regular basis, and that was The Real Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And apparently the new movie coming out um, this Friday, which we're recording well before you guys hear it, um, it'll be out by for over a week by the time that, uh, no, over two weeks by the time you guys see this or hear it or however you listen to, or watch us. Um, but apparently some of the storylines from the the uh, cartoon of Real Ghostbusters were actually adapted into the new Ghostbusters movie. You know what I find funny? Sort of, kind of. Is kind of, sort of. One day, I was watching Cartoon Network, mm -hmm. and they said Ghostbusters was coming on. I'm like, ooh, I haven't watched this show in years. So I sit down, and I watch it, and it's the old Ghostbusters. Like, in the 60s or 70s, what? there was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon called The Ghostbusters. Or maybe just Ghostbusters. And I was like... 1975? Was it? Maybe. Oh, no, that was a movie. Oh, wait, there's another one here. Filmation's Ghostbuster 1975. Well, it's weird. Hold on, let me, let me switch over to there. Um, Google Images. It looks like it's a TV show. But then there's also a cartoon where they're in a weird yeah. vehicle. Yeah, the cartoon was what I was watching. Okay, well, Filmation's not, Ghostbusters. Not on purpose, but yeah. That's what? I guess they're just, there we go. I guess the cartoon is based on the TV or the movie or something? Yeah, I guess. Huh. See that that's you just taught me something. I didn't even know that there was a TV or movie or whatever. I gotta look it up now because I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. That's All I know sad. is it, it said Ghostbusters was coming up, and I'm like, I gotta watch this. And it was you know, like you saw there, a gorilla in a car with other people, and I'm going, What the heck is this? <laughs> this has nothing to do with Ghostbusters. Where's Egon? Where 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 where's you know I it it's it really messed with my head, but odd, oddly enough, because we again we only had the basic you know networks, we in where I grew up had two Christian channels that were like super local. Only two, and they had their own. Yeah, only two. That's all it took. There you go. They, they had their kind of own like Saturday Busters. morning stuff. In a way, yeah. Anyway, sorry, got sidetracked. That gorilla in the live action one is freaking creepy, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, the local Christian stuff, they had like uh, their own cartoons and like puppets and stuff that they would do on Saturdays. Obviously, you know, for their own reasons. But, you know, every once in a while I would flip over and I'd be like, huh, I just watch it just because. But okay, as we've discussed, yeah. the cartoons did eventually shift. Yeah. And obviously we grew up. Yep. 
So what did you do after the cartoons on a regular basis? I mean, I kind of told you what I did a lot of the time around that time until the mid 90s, which is kind of when the cartoons started kind of dying off. And when I got an NES, I was rocking my Atari, both uh, the, the 2600 and the 7800. The 7800 was actually my first game system. For myself, uh, like I said earlier, a little bit of, you know, playing in the, in the mud hole. And, um, uh, you know, I could just run around in the yard or ride my bike or whatever. And another thing was Saturday was a grocery day. So the old folks, they worked all week and then they had Saturday and Sunday off. So Saturday was grocery day. And that was when I got to go out and go to like, you know, Funko land and, and, um, check thrift stores and whatnot. Dude, I wish we so, had those. Well, Funko well, land. <laughs> like I said, that I showed up, that showed up in, in Tucson where I was living right, probably about a year before, uh, game shop or game, game shop, <laughs> game stop. Took shame over. Stop. Yeah. Shame game stop. stop. Yeah. That's game stop. It is. Yeah. But that was pretty much my Saturday. If I wasn't out running around like a you know, wild child, uh, I was probably at a grocery store or a, you know a, a thrift store or something like that. You know, what you just said kind of amuses me. You go on the internet nowadays and you see people talking about Gen X, you know, playing outside and all this other stuff. And you're a few years younger than me. So technically, you're a millennial, but yet you did all that stuff, which is funny. So it's, yeah. that's why I don't put a lot of stock into different generations, of what they do or what they don't do. But anyway. Yeah, I think, often it, you know, there's one thing that I wanted to kind of cover was the fact that eventually they did stop doing Saturday morning cartoons. Yep. And, you know, I think, again, I hate to go off on a back in my day, you know, Everybody enjoys their Saturday the way that they're going to enjoy their oh, yeah. Saturday. But, you know, from my point of view, I wish that people could enjoy just getting up early in the morning, watching some good quality TV shows. It doesn't have to be a cartoon, just some good quality TV shows, and then having a good rest of their Saturday. You know what because... I did eventually after the cartoons started disappearing? What's that? PBS. Because then it had some shows that I, I grew up with in the afternoon, or well, not in the afternoon, but kind of during the day. And that was like things like 321 Contact and Electric Company and stuff. And that's actually, weirdly enough, in my later years, um, uh, Doctor Who and Are You Being Served and things like that. Oddly enough, I didn't think about PBS, but you're right. PBS had their own stuff going. Yeah. And th those never disappeared. They they kind of kept those going because up until, what, midday or sometimes mid-afternoon, that's when they had just random stuff for kids. And then, you know, kind of like three or four in the afternoons when they start getting like the serious stuff like the, what is it, the McLeal, or McLear uh, News Hour or whatever the heck it was. I don't remember the name of it. I'm winging it right now. Um, yeah, ours ours was always like golf or tennis or something. On PBS? Oh, not on PBS, sorry. Oh, I was about to say, wait a minute. <laughs> I was just talking about in general. Oh, one thing that we, we kind of glanced over and I wanted to talk about earlier was the fact that it wasn't a cartoon, but there was Beekman's World oh, and yeah. there was Bill Nye the Science Guy. That was always a staple of Saturday morning as well. Oh, yeah. Another Sorry. thing I want to say, the precursor of Saturday morning was almost just as good as the Saturday morning itself. TGIF. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that continued long after Saturday mornings disappeared because that went into like the, I think it started dying in the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to say that after uh, Family Matters ended, everything started going downhill. That's just me personally because that was the last show that I liked that was on there. Because at first it was uh, Boy Meets World had ended. And then mm -hmm. a season later, that's when Family Matters died. Well, went off the air. And that was that was kind of it. 
and then I think, if I remember correctly, um, TGIF did kind of end just a couple of years later. I believe so, yeah. Early 2000 or shortly afterwards. Didn't they also try to reboot it at one point? Possibly. I don't, I don't know about that. I believe they tried to reboot it. I can't confirm that. Um, but one thing, another was uh, Step by Step. Step and step by step, oh, dude, I love that show. Yeah, it it kind of seemed a little bit more mature, mm-hmm. at least to my tiny little brain, because Family Matters was ha ha funny. Oh yeah, but it was it was great. Uh, Boy Meets World did eventually start touching on some things where you know y- you were serious. Oh, yeah. Let's not start crying about Sean's dad having a heart attack and dying. That episode tears me the. F- up. Oh, you know what episode mean, got me with, with that one? What's that? The mic- motorcycle accident. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, <laughs> just like before we started this, we were discussing Futurama episodes. Oh, yeah. And I nearly started tearing up because of all the episodes in Futurama that make us cry. So the let's only not one that really about... does that for me is is Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. That one is I'm absolutely a, amazing. I, I'm, I'll be on the record as saying I am not a fan of dogs, but that episode, man, yeah, you, you can't help but feel for the dog. Yeah. Although we, you, it, we the episode does that have a was... happy ending, but it's still, it's like, man. What do we want? Fry's dog. When do we want it? Fry's dog. <laughs> you know, going back to Family Matters and everything being, you know, goofy and, and then going to Step by Step, which was serious. One thing that was was funny is the episode where of uh, Family Guy where uh uh Urkel turns into Bruce Lee. To me I thought that was like the cheesiest thing ever. But it, it kind of felt it kind of fit within the show. Now when it came to uh step by step, um Cody, you know, there was one episode where he, I if I remember correctly, he was defending Dana or something. And he just busts out all kinds of martial arts and stuff. I thought that was really cool. And then, like, well after the show ended, I found out that he was actually a uh, black belt martial artist. And he actually did compete and everything. That kind of threw me way off. I'm like, what the? So, you're right. It is kind of, I mean, it's like two drastic different things. But it's the same basic thing. Because Urkel turns into, uh, you know, Bruce Lee to defend Laura. Mm-hmm. And then Cody, you know, busts it out, and I maybe I think the fact that Cody busting out those moves was it made more sense because he he didn't have to tran or transform into somebody and be goofy and be a caricature. He's True. just he was just trying to defend somebody. So I don't know. Yeah, like you're saying, it was it was so much more um, adult, I guess, even though it was mm-hmm. family friendly. Yeah. And uh, you know we've left Saturday behind, but you yeah, know. we have now. Now we're on like Monday after Monday evening, <laughs> Friday yeah. evening. Sorry, but so now we have all the cartoons are starting to die. We are maturing. Um, that's when you know for me, and I'm quite sure for you as well. Video games filled that void. Well, video games always were around for me since 1986, but. Um, yeah, it's just the more the the cartoons ended first, they they stopped running them at ten o'clock, then nine o'clock, and then eventually eight o'clock, and then all and then all of a sudden they went away altogether. Um, that's when I started just sleeping in later and then just playing video games for the rest of the day, because by the by the time they they ended, I had a little black and white TV in my bedroom which I was playing the my Atari on or one of my Ataris on. And, you know, that's kind of where it went. Now, the only time that I didn't play games on a Saturday is if my friend wanted to go do something. And then we would just grab our skateboards and go out there and do whatever we got to do, you know. Yeah, for me, it was about the PlayStation era when everything kind of started dying and my maturity level is still not at its peak. But uh, (laughs) I I decided it hasn't changed in 30 years. No, probably not. But uh, <laughs> I just decided, you know, I didn't want to watch the newer cartoons that were coming on. And 
I just, you know, I would much rather wake up, have breakfast, pop a game into my PlayStation, and play it the rest of the day. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, I was just thinking about that. You uh, you are mentioning you didn't have cable growing up. Correct. I did have cable. And I really could have just changed the channel to keep the cartoons going. And I didn't. I think I really, I, I think, you know, at the time, I really did feel that the Saturday morning cartoons on the local channels, ABS, CBS, Fox, uh, NBC, I had to think about it there for a second. I really do think those were the better cartoons. So, and they but, may have been. Oh yeah, I mean that's where you have like your your GI Joe and and uh, um, Transformers and and all that. Mm-hmm. But you know, if I would have known, if I would have known then what I know now about you know that they were going to be ending, I probably would have tried to talk my my mom in, into a uh, a VCR. But, you know. Yeah. Now I know. And now we know. Yep. And now I know. All right. We had something planned for that, but it did not want to cooperate. I give up. Nope. (laughs) It never works when you're live, does it? (laughs) Nope. Never works live. We'll fix it in post. Now I'm quoting Saturday Night Live. Hey. We're still still. Well, that was Saturday. kind of that was yeah. That was kind of the culmination of a Saturday morning was the fact that you went through your day, and then afterwards, when it turned nighttime, live from New York, it's Saturday night. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Really? Yeah, because it was on after my bedtime. Oh, uh, doesn't mean I didn't try. Mean I... <laughs> Oddly enough. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons. That's funny. But I was, allowed. I was allowed to watch it because my parents just discounted it as a cartoon that was on in the afternoon or evening. They never really thought the fact that it's really geared towards adults. Right. But it's non offensive think- enough that a kid can watch it, but adults are going to get more of the jokes. Yeah, I think my parents probably watched part of an episode without watching the whole episode. They're just like, nope, can't watch that. But again, Saturday Night Live, totally okay. But yet, eventually, you were probably allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy, which hmm, it was definitely not a kid's cartoon. Not until I moved out of the house, though. Oh, That's okay. another one of those cable situations. That's um, right. It was I a Nickelodeon do remember, thing, wasn't it? Yeah. I do remember my brother, who wasn't living at the house, came over and he had a Beavis and Butthead poster. <laughs> and really? I was like, what is that? And I had no clue what Beavis and Butthead were. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm missing out on a cartoon. I don't know where this is coming from. But, uh, you know, he had, he had uh, left the house and he had access to cable. Mm-hmm. And, and we still didn't. Funny, speaking of Beavis and Butthead, I actually was a, was a late, uh, you know, discoverer of it. Because... I, as a kid, enjoyed music, and once MTV stopped doing music on a regular basis, I'm like, whatever, it's trash. You know how I discovered um, Beavis and Butthead? Tell us. Clueless. In that movie, movie, there's a scene where they're watching Beavis and Butthead. I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. So I asked around, and I found out that it was on MTV, so I watched it a few times, and there you go. I have never seen that movie. It was Alicia Silverstone. At one point, I had a massive crush on her, and then I found out later that she's a, you know, member of PETA or something, and then it's like, eh, no. I kind of agree with PETA's mission, but not the people, because they cause more animals to die than... You know, they're trying to save. But anyway, that's a different story altogether. Altogether, yes. So, yeah, that's how I found out about Beavis and Butthead. And, and you know what the funny thing is? About a year ago, they brought back Beavis and Butthead. Yes, I remember that. 
And it's weird. It's all the same voice actors, or at least people that sound exactly like the originals. I I think it's it's half of them are probably Mike Judge. (laughs) Yeah, I I was about ready to say. I think it is just Mike Judge. Yep. Although speaking of Mike Judge, though he people either love or hate Beavis and Butthead, but one thing that he did that is for the most part universally liked. It's not a cartoon, but Office Space. Yes. I, I think the reason why it's liked is because so many people can identify with it. PC load letter? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, there we go. Yeah, him, him talking to, uh, oh my gosh, see, my brain's already just, yeah, uh, what's her name, which everybody's like, you grew up in the Jennifer 90s, Anderson? you should know her name. Yeah, about flair. Oh yeah, he has fifty-two that, pieces of flair. I don't know how many pieces, but yeah, yeah it was a lot. <laughs> if you want me to wear that many, you require that I wear that many. I'm not going to do you that because we want you to have self-expression. Uh, the um, I'm uh, paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact lines. The quote from IMDb is, "You know what, Stan? If you want to wear thirty-seven pieces of flair." Something, something, something else. So I'm thinking 37. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other discussion that'll never happen on this podcast. I mean, honestly, with me, with me, they'd be lucky to get like five because I don't care about showing a lot of things on my. Well, yeah. You're not a flare type person. I'm just let's let me get in there, get it done. All right, did we have some questions from the cat? Probably. All right, folks, as we wind down, let's keep the nostalgia alive with some quick fire questions. As Scott and Sam share their memories, feel free to leave your own answers in the comments below. Yep, leave them in the comments. All right, what's the first question, Fifi? Meow. How did your Saturday mornings change as cartoons gradually vanished from the lineup? I think we've already kind of touched on some of that. Yeah, sort of. Slowly transition to video games and just playing outside, really. And just growing up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> physically. But I'm still not like a twelve-year-old in here. I'm still like a twelve-year-old. Anyway, what's the next question? Other than video games, what was your go-to activity or hobby on Saturday mornings once the cartoons disappeared? Video games. No, I'm just kidding. She said other than video games. <laughs> um, I mean, skateboarding was mine. Uh, Legos was another thing that I, I enjoyed. Well, I, I always enjoyed Lego, but um, after they disappeared, I was I got a little heavier into Lego, and then eventually I stopped Lego altogether. I rediscovered it as an adult, so there's that. But, I mean... It's just one thing ended, was replaced by video games, skateboarding, and, well, toys, really. What about you? Yeah. Um, I think I I like to go out and crash my bike. Um, Probably model cars, too. Yeah, sort of, kind of. (laughs) But that, you know, that was kind of a a general hobby for all the time. Uh, You know, Saturday mornings, again, you know, if it wasn't going to the grocery store and uh, looking at video games and whatnot in video game stores or thrift stores, you know, getting out and on my bike and just exploring the neighborhood and getting that sense of, of freedom, you know? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Is there something you did on Saturday mornings as a kid that you still do as an adult? If not, is there something you wish you still did? Yeah, I wish I still got up on a regular basis without complaining. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. As a kid, I was I got up because I had a singular purpose in mind. And now I am not a morning person. I can get up and function in the morning because I have to because I got to go to work and I got to get my nieces up for school. But I know if, if it's up to me, I'll sleep in until at least 11. But unfortunately... I'm an adult. I have adult things I got to do, so I got to do it. But I wish I could get up without 
any complaints or anything. Just like, all right, cool. I'm up. Let me get started with my day. And that's one thing that I, I envy about my younger self, but it is what it is. I miss the cereal and the pop tarts and the ability to eat that much sugar and not go completely and totally mentally insane or diabetes <laughs> or, or Wilford Brimley. Yeah. Diabetes. Yeah. I, again, I would pour myself one bowl, use a fork, eat the cereal and That's then weird. just keep adding to it. Just keep adding and keep adding to it. And I couldn't imagine doing that now. Well, the way that I, I, well, I do it when I still do it. Okay. That was weird wording. I don't know where I was going with that. The way that I do it now is like, all right, I eat the cereal, pour some more cereal in there to absorb the milk. I eat that, pour more cereal in, pour more milk in, and then keep it going until I've basically eaten the whole box. That's why I don't buy cereal anymore because I like cereal too much and I know that it's not good for you, so I eat it all. You need those little sampler boxes <laughs> that they used to put in people's mailboxes. Mailboxes? I used to get those from school. Really? They used to be like the school breakfast that they would offer, and I would just like uh, throw them in my backpack and take them all home, and I'd have a little hole. Oh, yeah, they would on. do that too. And then on yeah. Saturday, I'd just eat them all. And then i go raid the fridge for real boxes of cereal. So, yeah. I guess we're Saturday morning out. I believe so. I believe it's time for you to grab your skateboard, me to grab my bike, and we're just going to ride off into the sunset. I still have about two months before I can do that on my leg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had my doctor's appointment today, and they said... Well, it looks pretty good, but it looks like it may have shifted, so we're going to have you wait two more weeks before you you try to put weight on it. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, the thing is, I can totally relate to that because <laughs> everybody's like, come on, in the episode. I had fractured my wrist as a young teenager, and yeah, it was that rigmarole over and over and over, and <laughs> I had the cast for the longest time, and then I had like this weird... Uh, board that they strapped my arm to for the longest time. Oh, you're talking yeah. about like the uh, splint. Yeah, sort of, kind of. Yeah, I had a splint until my last doctor's appointment a month ago. Then they gave me a boot. And I was just given the go-ahead today. I don't need to wear the, the, the boot unless I'm, you know, getting up and moving around. So for all of our Canadian listeners, he's, he's literally talking about a boot. He's not talking about something. I love you, Canada. Wow, you're gonna just so just so uh, we explain. This is almost literally the exact same one that I have. Really? They gave me a boot that cost thirty nine bucks. The um, cheapskate. Yeah. Here, this is what we're talking about. Pulled it up on Amazon. Anyway, that's almost the same one that I've got, but not the same. Anyway, we better end this before we have a revolt because they're like, hey, they're not talking about stuff we care about anymore. And now they're talking about just being fat and having a boot. <laughs> yeah. And I think I might have angered the whole of Canada. Well, keep in mind that it's not just Canada that calls a trunk a boot. It's the UK Listen, too. I am sorry. I am so very all right, all right, sorry. So we, we better end this before you... You uh, destroy our, our uh, if viewership anyone before in, we get any. If anyone in Canada is offended, I am sorry. We will watch some Red Green. We'll watch some Corner Gas. We'll watch some Trailer Park Boys. Uh, we'll watch some Kids in the Hall. And I am out of Canadian TV shows that I love. And there's only one of those shows that I actually like, and that's Red mm -hmm. Green. The others I've not seen. I started to try to watch Trailer Park Boys, but... It's not for me. Oh, it's an amazing show, though. Maybe. It, it, it's, it doesn't tickle my fancy, but now we're talking about other shows. All right. We should all right, everybody. end this. So, hey, yep. we will see all of you later. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, don't forget to visit our socials down there in the, the uh, description. Mm -hmm. until, until next week. 
when we find something else to talk about and then totally forget the subject. Yep. All right, guys. See you later. Later. Hey, everyone. It's Fifi. That's like totally it for today's Vintage View podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you had a blast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more retro gaming vibes. You guys rock. Seriously. Catch you in the next episode. Peace out.